Hi, Mary Lou McCoy here with my final video blog about uh, neo-evolution. As the mother of two children with type 1 diabetes, I live in hope for a cure for them, their children, really anybody living with a chronic illness or an incurable disease. I would do anything I would have done anything to cure or to prevent the hardships that they bear. To paraphrase Feinberg, if it were possible to make genetic changes in my body to have prevented their disease, why wouldn't I? What parent wouldn't? According to Wolpe, neo-evolution or directed evolution is intentionally designing life forms on our planet. It's the guided manipulation of our genes to achieve a self-desired result. In comparison, traditional evolution is the natural adaptation of a life form to its environment. It's slow and occurs over many generations. Neo-evolution holds that once we are capable of manipulating our genes and adapting the changes for ourselves, our offspring will be the conversion from evolution to neo-evolution. An example of technology that is altering or may alter evolution, um, I'm going to go back to diabetes. There are a few rare forms called uh, monogenetic diabetes, and they're called that because uh, well, monogenetic neonatal diabetes because there is only one or two genes that trigger the disease and it is always diagnosed before the age of one, most often before six months of age. For people, whatever the age they are, who can be gen genetically tested to see if they have the gene, they can go off insulin and go on an oral medication, it works for them, it doesn't work for others. But for the rest of the people with type 1 diabetes, like my children, diabetes is not only a genetic disease, but it is a, an autoimmune disease. So it's very complex. For the majority of people with type 1 diabetes, there is also genetic hope, however. Researchers at the University of Wisconsin have successfully used genetic manipulation to turn part of the liver into a functioning pancreas via a single injection of a new gene into the liver triggers only 2% of the liver's cells to turn into a pancreas. And within 45 minutes of that injection, rats with type 1 diabetes had perfect blood sugar control and maintained it for over six weeks in time. Since then, researchers have been able to keep rats alive for well over a year with these uh, periodic injections. Right now they're waiting to test them on dogs, the original insulin genetic trial from the 1920s. Now the dark side of genetic manipulation is of course, as Feinberg proposes, that these very same technologies that can be used to cure disease can be used to develop super attributes in people such as quicker muscles, longevity, increased cognitive ability, um, all sorts of things. And, but part of the problem is that each attribute that we might select for ourselves gets passed down in some way to our children, modifying them and modifying future generations. And that begs the question, what are the moral and ethical implications of neo-evolution? Well, Michael Bass challenges us to understand that to achieve the future we want, we must establish our priorities and then reflect on our values, consider the possible consequences and complications, and take steps to realize that said future that we envision. Because, he warns, genetic manipulation is a slippery slope that could easily take mankind to places we likely don't want to go, for example, uh, societal divides, as some people are able to afford enhancements while others are not. 
if people begin enhancing themselves, they're going to set a new baseline for what it means to be normal, which will require continuous and increasing need for even more enhancements over time. And as over time we genetically alter ourselves, what does this mean for our children or their children? So you ask, should we continue? And this is not necessarily an easy question to answer. As Bess eloquently states, the technologies to cure are inseparable from those to enhance. To stop one is to stop the other. And while I'm concerned and a little frightened about the things I've read this week, about the moral and ethical implications, I could not ever stand against something that could cure my children, their children, their children. The lure and the promise of a cure is indeed irresistible. It's irresistible to me in every way. So there you have it. Thank you.